Hi, I'm Marc-André Bélanger and welcome to our, my presentation at ELS 2021 on the paper that I wrote with Mark Feely called A Scheme Foreign Function Interface to JavaScript Based on an Infix Extension. All of this presentation is running inside a browser and will be available to you at the URL provided here. Uh, and it was built with Gambit Scheme and Reveal.js. So let's first go over the motivation, the goals, uh, and a very quick demonstration of our pro uh, project, and then run through the syntax, the implementation, a few examples, and then the related work and conclusion. What you see here is a uh, Gambit Scheme REPL compiled to JavaScript. So this is a standard Scheme REPL, and it uses the Gambit Scheme uh, universal backend in order to compile to JavaScript and then be run inside a browser. The user interface that you have here is a small wrapper on top of it, you know, written in JavaScript and CSS HTML. But basically, this is this is straight Gambit scheme compiled to JavaScript. And so we started from here, and what we want to do is have a way to interface with the JavaScript DOM APIs uh, to maybe build some user interfaces or use other JavaScript APIs such as the Fetch API in order to go fetch some resources from inside a Gambit Scheme console. Typically, uh, inter-language communications happen using what uh, people call a fun uh, foreign function interface. And so this allows code uh, written in language A to go call code written in language B by using a what is an implementation-specific way. Uh, it's a very mechanistic way of, of transferring data from one language to the other. And not every foreign function interface allows bidirectional communication. And sometimes you can only call uh, one language uh, and not the, the source language from the foreign one. This is what uh, calling C from Gambit C using not the web REPL that uh, I've shown you, but the standard compiled Gambit that's what you have to do to call a simple function as ldx. You first need to use gambit-specific cdeclare in order to include mat.h in the compiled code. Then you need to define a procedure which, which is called ldx in this case. And we actually define a lambda that wraps and calls the C equivalent called, uh, here we pass the name of the C function, ldx which takes a double and an int and returns a double. All of this has to be compiled, and this has to, to be uh, have access to the proper libraries. And that's why it, it only concerns uh, the, not the, it doesn't concern the JavaScript REPL. But I think it's pretty obvious that this is very idiosyncratic. Maybe this example is a bit more involved, and, and we don't have to go through it all. It just shows you that it can get a little bit complex really fast when you want to do some custom data conversions. For example, here you can see that we have to call some scheme macros and um, some scheme macros here too. It works, it works very well, but it's uh, maybe a little bit too complicated for the, the, the needs that we have. We don't want to compile any code and ideally we want to, to stay as close to JavaScript as possible. We want to have a natural syntax that allows the programmer to express uh, something in JavaScript by staying as close to JavaScript as possible. And for this, we decided that we would move away from a somewhat cumbersome DSL from the function interface to what we call the expression as interface. And what this does is that we, we will be passing expressions around instead of, of compiling functions and we'll actually let the foreign language, in this case JavaScript, uh, the foreign languages eval do the work and evaluate for us the expressions that we feed it. This allows us to uh, avoid type annotations and provide a few automatic conversions, which are optional. And we can use it from the, the uh, REPL. And so we have to avoid compilation. We, we really want it to be uh, as transparent and natural as possible. So here's a quick demonstration using the exact same uh, REPL that you've seen uh, on, the, on the slides before. We can define procedures, scheme procedures, 
here the hello procedure that takes name as an argument and passes it to a JavaScript looking expression uh, which actually uses our FFI to in effect uh, in this case launch uh, an alert we can also use the second procedure that we defined here set bg color to change the background color and key up we can set it back to what it was so th this really quickly shows how we think powerful this is and uh, very natural looking any javascript programmer should see exactly what this code does now javascript and scheme uh, obviously have different syntaxes and we somehow have to bridge the syntactic gap between JavaScript's infix syntax and Scheme's prefix syntax. And for this, we we're lucky because we can directly use what Gambit calls the Scheme Infix extension, which is a reader extension which allows Gambit Scheme's reader to read uh, an infix language based on a grammar that is not specifically JavaScript's, but the that grammar is a somehow a mix of algo-like languages. This is what it looks like when you have you, you want to write uh, you mix prefix and infix expressions. So you, you begin in a prefix expression, and let's say you just want to invoke an infix expression, then you need to use the backslash reader macro. What that macro will do is read the following until a delimiter, in this case we're going to use a space, it's going to read the expression and interpret it as an infix expression, and then toggle back to the prefix reader. Now, we can do the same thing from inside an infix expression. We can splice in prefix uh, expressions. So let's say we want to have a, a JavaScript expression inside of which we want to in invoke scheme. For this, we only need to use the backquote character in order, in order to uh, switch the reader back to the prefix reader. And then the same thing happens here. We have to use a delimiter. Any of these delimiters will work and come back to an infix expression. So what does this look like in practice? Well, it looks really relatively simple. So if you want to interface, uh, to, interface to pure JavaScript or any other, any other language, but the, for the, a dynamic language, but for the moment we'll, we'll focus on uh, JavaScript, you can have a scheme expression as on the first line and then just put a infix, put, this will tell the reader to read the three plus four in a uh, infix manner, and then switch back to prefix, and so on for all of these. So here we define a procedure. I want to tell you that the six grammar no, uh, understands about a few JavaScript specific uh, keywords, such as function and return, such that we can write expressions like this one, which actually are exactly the same as you would write in JavaScript. So this is, is pretty natural. Now, what happens if you want to mix JavaScript and scheme expressions? Well, you can do that using the back quote, as we said. Uh, on the first line, it's pretty trivial. You can just invoke a scheme expression inside a, an infix expression, and it will be parsed accordingly. You can define variables and so on and so on. You can also use it in a let, so uh, scope is not a problem. Now, one thing that you have to be careful about is uh, when resolving identifiers, because there can be some ambiguities due to the fact that JavaScript and Scheme don't have the same uh, valid identifier rules. So number of items that you see on the first line is a valid identifier, uh, Scheme identifier, but it's not a valid JavaScript identifier. And so what you have here, you have an expression which does 10 times the number of items. This is read, the 10 times is read as infix, but then we escape back to prefix and number of items is actually read by the scheme reader. The scheme reader understands that we want to get the number of items uh, variable and it passes it back to the JavaScript ex expression before computing and giving the result in uh, back to the REPL. If we avoid ambiguities with uh, parentheses, by by putting the uh, operator 
and the 10 at the end, there's no problem because the, the reader knows that there's a delimiter here and it has to switch back to infix. What happens though is when we toggle here from prefix to infix and then we toggle back to infix, what will actually happen is that the reader will try to read number of items um, star 10 variable, but that variable does not exi exist. And so you have to be careful about that. Now, how all this is built, you have basically two, two building blocks. You have the uh, you, what Gambit calls its universal backend, which is uh, a way to compile the GVM to any number of targets. Uh, for us, we're interested in the JavaScript target. And the reader, the sixth reader, which implements the reader macro and other macros in order to do the conversions. The GVM representation of types is actually how the GVM uh, implements itself in JavaScript. And so this is not something that we will modify, but this is the base layer of how everything, uh, every scheme type is represented by the GVM in JavaScript. And as we will see, we'll, we're able to access these types. So for example, the GVM uh, maps the void object to un uh, JavaScript undefined, uh, the booleans to the booleans, fixed nums to numbers, and, and so on. Now, we've seen how we chose to bridge the syntactic gap between scheme and, and JavaScript. Let's see how we now decide to bridge the semantic gap. And for this, we have to define a very particular reader macro, in this case, the backslash reader macro, which needs to construct an AST from a six expression such that we can actually emit, eventually emit and construct uh, JavaScript expressions. So this expression here is actually converted to this abstract syntax tree. And what you need to remember uh, are not the names uh, of the, the ASD nodes, but rather the root node, which is a macro. So the six dot infix macro is the macro that is responsible to, uh, of constructing a string of JavaScript code from the AST and wrap it in a function such that we can pass it to the JavaScript eval. Every time it encounters a scheme parameter, a scheme parameter uh, in this case is a, an expression uh, preceded by a backtick, has to evaluate it, convert it to JavaScript, and then pass it back. And Every time there's a type conversion, that's the job of this six dot infix macro. Now we've talked about how the GVM represents its uh, its uh, types in uh, JavaScript. What we're going to see here is how the FFI itself represents the type conversions between what the programmer uh, writes and what we have chosen as a set of uh, reasonable conversions, automatic conversions. Let's open the JavaScript console, and we can see that uh, in this scheme REPL, I've used what we call pass-through types. And pass-through types are just a way to pass uh, unconverted objects from either language to the other. In this case, I'm passing unconverted scheme objects to the JavaScript console and logging them to the JavaScript console using directly the JavaScript API console.log. So this uh, flow num should actually be a number. And so what we see here is we see the GVM representation, which is a flow num, and the value of the flow num, which is a number. We can look at this for others, but let's just look at the, uh, the, the list, for example, where we see that we, have a, we actually have a pair, which is the GVM representation uh, with its values here. So you can do this with any object and uh, either go from, from scheme or uh, using uh, passing scheme objects or JavaScript objects with form. Now, how do we convert procedures and functions? Well, you would think that it would be relatively trivial to pass uh, to, to map scheme procedures to JS functions. Well, what we, what we chose uh, was uh, to map the scheme procedures to JavaScript async functions such that every result is a promise. 
This means that when you have a scheme to JavaScript call, you add a scheme callback for a promise resolution, and then the scheme thread waits until this callback is called and stores the result inside a mutex uh, thread local variable or a mutex uh, specific field. On the other hand, when you have a JavaScript to scheme call, well, you create a promise, you put the promise procedure parameters, um, which, which form an array, you put that in a callback queue, which is actually a scheme thread. And uh, this scheme, <coughs> when the scheme call is completed, when you have a result, uh, you resolve the promise with the result and then JavaScript can use it. Now the implementation of, of this is uh, what we call function memoization through self-modifying code. And so what happens is, let's say you define a function called add1 and you pass the scheme x to the JavaScript x plus 1 expression. If you show the representation of this function before invoking it, what you see is the result of the parsing of the JavaScript AST that was created by, by the, the reader into a string. Now, the first time this will be invoked, we'll pass the, the host function memoized here, we'll pass the JavaScript string to JavaScript eval, evaluate it, and then store back in itself the result, the, a, a resulting scheme procedure. That, that allows us uh, to uh, save the costs of evaluating the expression every single time. Now, as I said before, we can access scheme object representations. And to do this, it's relatively simple. Let's say we have a uh, variable called num. We associate it to a complex number. We can print the scheme object representation, as we saw in the other slide, directly in the console. So we access the JavaScript's representation scheme object field in image field, which is two. That's what we expect. But we can also mutate this. And by mutating it, we can see that we've changed the, uh, the value of the object. Now, here I associated the JavaScript num variable to the scheme equivalent. And so I, I can access it in the JavaScript console, and I can also modify in scheme object. as I want to. This should be reflect reflected here. Now, here are a few examples that we think are interesting. Uh, the first example uh, is going to fetch a number of images in parallel. So I'm not going to run through all of this code, but mostly what you can understand from this is that we have uh, a macro system that works and we define a parallel map, which will actually launch a fetch that you can see here. So it's using the JavaScript fetch API in parallel, each fetch being in its own thread, and then go get the images and show them on the screen. So what you see here are all of the pages fetched in parallel of the first scheme report. Another cute example uh, that is built on the same concept of running everything in its, in its own thread in parallel, in this case we have only a single thread, uh, is plotting the ISS position on a, on, a, uh, on a map. So using markers, I have no idea where it's going to be. So here it is. And this is going to update the position by, by uh, updating a list of markers that is going to be reflected on the, on the map. What this example shows is how you can take advantage of scheme and pre-existing uh, JavaScript libraries in order to build more complex and uh, interesting applications. Now for the related work, uh, there are mostly three different ways to, to, to go about that um, we've called code as string. And so uh, in GHCJS, <coughs> GHCJS, excuse me, uh, 
which is in Haskell, you uh, pass around uh, strings of JavaScript. And so the JavaScript part is relatively easy to see, but we can see that we have a, a somewhat, um, it's somewhat a DSL because you have to, to pass in around particular names for arguments. There's also the, what we call, or what JSKIN calls the uh, dot notation. Lips also uses this. We didn't go this route because what this does is actually assign some semantic to the syntax and that's not how we wanted to implement this. Uh, it works, but we really wanted to keep the interface at the syntax level and keep it as close as the, the uh, JavaScript as possible. Finally, Racket uses a very well-known uh, lang feature, which allows you to, for example, define a particular language, create it, and then uh, if you choose to use it in a, in a whole file, you define the language for the file, and then the reader reads and interprets this file as a particular language. You can also invoke it, uh, we believe, a little bit less cleanly than our solution inside the reader uh, inline. So thank you for watching our presentation. Uh, this presentation is going to be available at this URL and you can try it out online uh, if you want. You can also go to gambitscheme.org slash try in order to try the REPL with the latest uh, Gambit version. But uh, this, this REPL here doesn't contain the examples, although it will launch a, a series of, uh, of uh, demonstration examples if you just open the page and, and, and don't, don't touch uh, anything. So uh, on, uh, on this, uh, I thank you, and uh, let's hope you have interesting questions.